Hello and welcome back to the Lambda Prolog and HOLP tutorial. By HOLP, I don't mean the best sense of help, of course, but higher order logic programming. Still, I bet none of you knew that HOLP was also the best sense of help and I'm glad I HOLP expand your knowledge of English. But enough of that. Today we will finally talk about lists, and although they are nothing more than a set of objects put in a certain order, which is simple enough, you can do a lot with them. So first things first, how do we represent lists? How do we write them? So the empty list is written nil, or open bracket, close bracket, and the list that contains something, for example the list of my favorite things, is written open bracket and then the first element which is raindrops and roses and then a comma and then the second element which is whiskers on kittens and then the third element which is bright copper noodles and then the fourth element which is chin tonic with lemon quite satisfactory so anyway this is a list and as you can say by the double quotes, it's a list of strings. Or should I say, a list of my favorite strings. So that was the exhaustive way to write a list, but more often you want to do things to a list. You want to either examine it or construct it. So how do we examine a list? Well, at any one moment, if you have a non-empty list, you have access to two things. Its head and its tail. Those are the two things that you have right away. So the head of the list is the first element of the list. So here, for example, it's this, uh, Raindrop from the Roses. And the tail of a list is the list itself minus that first element. So it's the list of these three elements. So that's how you examine the list or you deconstruct it. Uh, but how is a list constructed? Well, you do the exact opposite, meaning if you have one integer in a variable, call it i, notice the capital letter, and another variable that has a list of integers, call it list int, you can construct the list that has at its head element that integer i, and at its tail uh, position, the list list int. Uh, and the way you write that is open bracket, and then the head element, and then a pipe, and then list int, and then you close the bracket. Simple enough. There are other ways to write a list, but I'm not going to mention them for now to uh, avoid confusion. Uh, now that we know how to write lists, let's see how we can use them. The first example we'll see uh, of operations on list is membership. So imagine, for example, there's someone at the door, and uh, I want to check if his name is on the guest list or not. So how does it work? Well, the first let's first declare the type of membership. So I want a predicate that will be true for, or will link in a relation, on the one hand an element, here a name, so of type string. So let's go ahead and use the keyword that we learned before, type. Let's give a name to our predicate, member. And the first uh, parameter will be an element, here of type string. The second parameter will be a guest list or a list of strings. Uh, and this is how you write the list of something. So you could write list of int for it's of integer or even list of list of strings for list of list of strings, etc. Uh, and notice that the name list is also in the green shade. That means it's a, it's a keyword. And as always with, predic with predicates, uh, they end with the type O. So let's go ahead and save this and go back to this, erase all this nonsense and start with the first rule of membership. So when is an element a member of a list? Intuitively as a human being, if you want to see if someone is on the guest list or not, you will start at the head of the guest list and if the head of the guest list is the name you're looking for, well there you have it, it's a member. So we write the first rule that goes member name, notice the um, variable, the capital letter. So this says that name is member of any list on which head position it is. I don't know if the 
the phrase is grammat grammatically correct, but you, you understand what I mean. So if it's the at, at the head of position of a certain list, that's a member of a list. And then the tail, let's give it just the name tail. And end with a dot. And before writing the second rule, um, I forgot to mention something. So there are there are two ways of writing lists in Tages. So there are the way we saw, which is one, two, three, for example. And then there is the another style of writing list, which is parenthesis one, and then colon colon, and then two, and then colon colon, and three, and then colon colon, and then nil, or the nil, or the empty list. So uh, if you're a Haskell or a Prolog programmer, you are familiar with the first style, so the one I've been using. And if you know cock, you're familiar with the second style. And since they are equivalent, I am going to stick with the first one because that's my preferred style. But you can use the cock style if you want. And if you don't know what cock is, I am of course talking about the French interactive theorem prover, not the male um, chicken. So let's remove this. And getting back to the membership, uh, if it's not in the head, uh, in the head position of a list, if the name is not in the head position of the list, intuitively you're going to look in the rest of the list, so the tail of the list. So go ahead and write the second rule, which is member, member. A name is a certain member of a list if, so you're going to extract the head of the tail the head and the tail, sorry. So the name, the variable name is a member of this list if it is a member of the tail. Dot. So two rules for membership. Either it's in the head of the list or it's in the tail of the list. Uh, and you're done. So you might say what happens if the list is empty or what if you keep taking the tail rule uh, of the list until there is nothing left and you don't find the name. In that case, since there is no, no rule uh, for membership where the list is empty, since there is no rule that goes member of a name nil, uh, um, the computer will not be able to say that the name is in that list, which is exactly what we're looking for. So let's take this away. You only write what you want to be true, not what you want to be false. All right, now let's look at a slightly more complicated uh, predicate, and I might borrow some words from the imperative programming world, and I am aware that some hardcore declarative programmers might want to make an attempt on my life, but they have to find out where I live first. Uh, the predicate we're looking for is a predicate called length that will take a list as input, so quote input, and that will find the length of that list, or the number of elements on that list. Or more declaratively, we want a predicate that is true for all lists of five elements, on the one hand, and the integer five, on the other hand, and all lists of six elements, on the one hand, and the integer six, on the other hand, and the empty list, and the integer zero, etc. So let's start with the basic one, the length of the list of the empty list, is zero. Uh, let's go ahead and um, declare the type of this predicate. So type length. The first uh, parameter is a list of strings, for example. Second parameter is an integer, and since it's a predicate, it ends with O. So I know right now we only see things that end with O, but you'll see later that um, you can you can create things that are not predicates. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's go back to the code. Uh, so you notice here that I wrote uh, the empty list bracket bracket. You might want to write it nil if you want. Uh, if you don't know that nil comes from the Latin word for nothing, as in that quote from Horace's Odes, nil mortalibus ardu est. Nothing is impossible for humankind, especially not learning Lambda Prolog. Exact quote, by the way. So now um, yeah, let's write in nil. I, kind of prefer this because it colors it in red so you know it's a it's a reserved uh, symbol now length length of um, uh, other lists can be computed uh, in this way if a list has at least one element it has also at least length one for that head plus the length of the tail 
list or the list that it's in the tail position of that list. So for example, if you have the list head and tail, so the list that has at its head position the element named head and the tail position the list named tail, uh, it's going to have a certain length, um, let's call it len, if the length of that tail so the length of the list that it's in the tail position uh, is equal or is related uh, to the integer len t, for example. And the first integer len, so this one, is equal to uh, len t plus 1. So here I introduce this um, keyword is which is responsible for uh, computations in Lambda Pro. So if you want the len to be the result of the addition of uh, integers or the multiplication of integers, etc., you use the word is, the keyword is. If you want to know more about it, you go to the um, website we talked about, the website of Tejas, and you go to Ilton, what was it? This one. Yeah, there it is. So it is the evaluation predicate. So you can you can read all this. Um, you can also read the type constructors, int, real, string, etc. Uh, this will give you an idea of a uh, more broad idea of what Tejas um, offers you as a uh, keywords. Now, just something I have to point out at this moment. Although logically, when you say A and B imply C, it is equivalent to saying B and A imply C, meaning the and is commutative. Like here, for example you have this and, because the comma is the and, uh, this and this implies this. Logically, you could also have this and this implies that. Um, but since we are in logic programming, there is the word programming, and that means the order between A and B can be important. Although we are talking about relations, there is at least some vague notion of input and output and of order. So as a general rule of thumb, before using a variable in a call to a predicate, always ask yourself, is this variable supposed to be provided by the predicate as, quote, an output? Or is it supposed to be, quote, an input to the predicate and used by the predicate? In which case, the variable has to come from somewhere else. For example, here, the predicate is, and we just saw that this, this is the predicate of evaluation, is going to use the value len t, or the variable len t. So the variable len t cannot, or has to come from somewhere else, meaning here. So you first call this predicate on the tail that is giving, the tail is an input, and you receive as an output uh, an integer, and then you use that integer as an input to another predicate, but not the other way around. Let's see a very rapid um, example of, um, of what this code is going to do. So for example, suppose you call it with length and the list 2 and 3, and then give me the output. What it's going to do is try to uh, execute or use this rule, and then it's going to see that nil is not this list, or this list is not the empty list. So it's going to go to the second rule, and it's going to separate this list into a head and a tail. So it's going to take 2 and 3, and it's going to separate it as the head 2, and then the list that contains only 3. And then it's going to call on length again with the list 3, uh, and another integer that it's going to find. And when it's go, it, it, when, and when the, the call to length with the only list, the singleton list 3, is going to be called, um, it's going to notice that 3 is not, or the list that contains 3 is not the empty list, so it's going to go here again, and it's going to separate this list between the head element 3 and the empty list, so pipe nil. Uh, and the call to length nil is finally going to give zero. Zero is then going to be used here to compute zero plus one. So this is going to give one, which is itself going to be used here and 
compute one plus one, which is going to give two. So the final, the first call, sorry, is going to give back two, which is the length of the list. So let's go ahead and test our program, remove all this, all the way it won't compile. Let's see, we've put all the dots. Let's save, and it should be fine. TGCC lists. Okay, TG link lists. TG sim lists. So for example, let's say is member um, A. So is, uh, is A a member of the list uh, B, A, and C? It's going to say yes. Uh, another uh, thing we can try is member... Uh, is there a certain variable x, or can you find um, an element that you call x that is a member of the list a and B and it's gonna say yes well A is a member of A and B and you can ask it for more solutions by saying Y and it's gonna say B is a member of the list A and B and if you say Y again it's gonna say no more solution uh, another thing we can try is length of the list um, oh, let's just give it variables A the variable b and the variable c uh, len let's go and say well len is 3 which is what we wanted no more solutions so there you go that was the fourth video that introduced the lists of the uh, lambda prolog uh, my name is Zach Shiani and this was the introduction to this video of the tutorial of higher order logic programming and lambda prolog and if you don't realize it yet you just wrote little recursive programs right there but we'll see more about that thanks for watching